talking about, see that going down there, the mystery word envelope. And we've got our guest speaker back. Welcome back to Jennifer Glick. She is a master reading simplified teacher and she often shares her <clears throat> great practice and her success story. So I'm so glad that she's here today. And today we're going to be talking about blending and how big a problem it is and how easy it is actually to solve. Research is pointing us um, even more recently here in 2020 towards a more efficient way to teach reading, to teach blending, how to put sounds together to read a word. And here at Reading Simplified, we call it blend as you read. Some people call it continuous blending or successive blending. And uh, that is the key strategy that really rockets our kids ahead. So we use here at Reading Simplified an activity called Read It to teach that decoding strategy. And Jennifer here has brilliantly come up with the mystery word envelope game, which is working for her when she's got her whole class spread out. She can't work in small groups. So it's going to be so cool to share this with you today about this game. So Jennifer, thanks so much for being here again. Oh, thank you. I, I always love coming and, and sharing with everyone and, and visiting with you. I always learn new things from you all the time. It, it is so great to have you as a collaborator because you are you are giving us um, new ideas and putting this uh, idea concept of resimplified you're getting giving it legs in the classroom and sharing it with the world and i know most people here uh, know uh, you because of what you shared in the past and are very grateful for you so, so for those of you who don't know Jennifer, I want her to tell her story a little bit about Reading Simplified. She's an experienced teacher, but she discovered mm -hmm. some activities. Um, she started with Switch It in a Level Up Challenge just a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Many of you have been recently in our Level Up Challenge to do just one activity, Switch It. And today's activity, Read It, pairs very well with that. And so I want her to tell her story about being a teacher and how she came to discover Reading Simplified and what it's done for her before we actually dive in to read it and the mystery word envelope. Uh, well, yes, hi. For those of you who haven't seen me before, um, yes, I was teaching um, first grade ELL students for about uh, 17 years before I met Marnie. <laughs> um, I was... Uh, there's always those kids in your class that you just can't seem to get through to. And hard as you try, you, some kids, you just can't get through to them to learn how to read. And it always bothered me because mm -hmm. to me, reading is just one of the most important skills they must have before they leave me in first grade. And I always felt really bad when my kids would leave and I hadn't met that goal yet. Uh, and one year, um, a friend of mine suggested Marnie, she was having her um, switch it challenge and she suggested I check it out and I did. Uh, and I, I did this challenge with this little group of uh, four or five kids that I had that were that group of kids. You just, no matter how hard you tried, you couldn't get through. They'd been in intervention all year. Um, they'd been, you know, seeing reading interventionists, so another teacher. Uh, I'd been trying everything I could think of, and just nothing was sticking or getting through to them at all. Um, after one week of Switch It, these, these kids were reading their first book. <laughs> it was amazing. Wow. Uh, they'd made so much progress. Um, a, a lot of times, uh, and we've talked about this before, <laughs> they, they get this, this little light, it just clicks on. Uh, I think before that, like a lot of kids, they, they learned the letters, they knew what the letters were and the sound that they made, but they had no idea how that fit into reading. It just didn't make any sense to them. They hadn't made that connection yet. And switch it really helps them see it when they're in the act of, you know, getting the sounds for the words. It, it helps them to make that connection. Uh, and then, of course, I moved on after switch it to other things. Uh, and yes, before they left uh, the end of that year, their reading intervention teacher was like, oh, my God, what happened? What did you do? Because it was just almost like night and day. It just it clicked. And for a couple of them, they just really took off after that. Uh, a couple others still needed uh, a little bit more help. They weren't quite there yet. Uh, but yeah, for a couple of them, when it clicked, they just zoomed and they were gone. Uh, so that was at the end of a school year. I only had a couple of months to try because I think it was in March. So I was really excited for the next school year to start. Um, I joined the academy over the summer. I soaked up all the videos, took in all the learning that I could get. Uh, and by the time the new school year started, I was ready to go. Um, I had a group of first graders again that year. And by the end of the year, 
um, it was the first time I was ever able to say this would have been now my 18th year of, of teaching. The first time I was ever able to honestly say that I sent every single one of my students off at the end of the year as readers. Every one of them could read and that never would have happened uh, if I hadn't have discovered these methods, read it, switch it, sort it, all of them put together uh, and then rereading and the text uh, really use decodable readers. That's a big plus for these kids. Uh, but uh, putting all of those pieces together, uh, it just made a huge difference in my kids. Like I say, it was the first time I've ever made, been able to make that happen. Uh, the following year, again, I was trying it and I had a really challenging class because I had a first and second grade combined classroom. Um, all again, still ELL learners, so at various levels of English knowledge, some with none uh, and some that were almost fluent. Uh, but all those different levels, all those different ranges and two different grades at the same time. And before, I think it was uh, October, middle of October, end of October, I had one of my small groups and these were first graders, not second graders, first graders that were reading chapter books. Woo! This was, like I say, before Christmas. It was amazing. I've never had that happen. <laughs> uh, and of course, they flew after that. Unfortunately, that was last year and our school year was cut short. Um, I was so excited to take, you know, the entire class. They were on such a great track. We were doing fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, our year got cut short and I didn't get to finish with them. And uh, I've now moved to a new school. So I also don't know what's happened to them after that. Uh, Makes me sad, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I've, I've got a new opportunity at a new school. I've now moved from first grade down to kindergarten. Um, but then again, a new challenge this year is starting the year with kindergartners who've never been to school before in their lives, <laughs> uh, starting the year virtually. Instead of in the classroom, we had to start virtually. Uh, and that's why this whole year group. I've, I've, yeah, a whole group. Because, All day. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I have six hours with these little five-year-olds all on the computer uh, every day. Um, and we did that for the entire first quarter. Thank goodness now we are in the classroom. Yay! <laughs> uh, but, uh, had, and again, it's still a whole group because for them, it's just, we have to keep that social distance and you can't send kids off to work independently without keeping a really close eye. So I'm still working on how to get those small groups in. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, yeah, having to start the, the year, um, working remotely, I, I made some adaption adaptions to the switch it so that I was able to do it, uh, virtually. Um, and I've made adaptions to the read it and, uh, just the whole system. I've had to make little minor tweaks to make right. it work remotely. Mm -hmm. And now that we're back in the classroom too, again, I'm still having to kind of modify it because I'm still having to work whole group rather than my small groups um and it is it's different because you've got so many different levels mm -hmm. um so it's it's been an exciting ride um i'm anxious to keep going and see how far i can get these kindergartners reading it would be really awesome if i could get them into chapter books before the end of the year <laughs> uh, I but i don't know that would be awesome well, you're already uh, way yeah, outpacing really your curriculum. You're already way outpacing your curriculum because their curriculum was calling for yeah. three months of letter sound, letter names instruction, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When I moved over to the new school, I had to learn the the new phonics program they had at this school, um, and it's a, a great program. Uh, it's used a lot, uh, but yeah, their pacing schedule has me teaching only two letter names and sounds each week. Um, and so in order to get through all 26 letters of the alphabet, it was going to take us three months. Um, and that's not even including, you know, the SH, the TH, you know, the other sounds that they need to know because they hear them all the time. Uh, they weren't going to start uh, blending or reading words or writing words until after we'd gotten through all that first three months. And uh, when I looked at it, I was like, this, this is not going to work for me. <laughs> um, I, I can't move that slowly. And so, yeah, I think uh, uh, if you saw my, the last video I did with Marnie, it was like the third day of kindergarten and I had my students reading and blending words together and doing switch it. And we've just been flying ever since. The kids love it. The parents are amazed. Um, we're just having a great time. <laughs> it's been going very, very well. <laughs> yeah. And she's got kid, you know, kids whose 
parents have other kids that have been in kindergarten before and they're not usually reading real words in the first couple weeks of class, right? That's really exciting. Yeah. So we showed how Jennifer added in Switch It and a little bit, I think we talked a little bit about Read It and reading real text. We talked about that mm. a couple weeks ago, but now we're, well, you know, we're several months past that. We're, are you at the third month-ish um, for, because yeah, well, uh, you started yeah, a little yeah. early. Yeah, we're, we're about halfway through our second quarter. We started school August uh, 10th, mm -hmm. 9th or 10th, I believe, it was, whatever Monday that was. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like a lifetime ago. Um, and so, and yeah, so now but, we're November or November 17th the, the, when we're yeah. filming this. And yeah, Mackenzie says that's so awesome, Jennifer. And Christina says amazing, Jennifer. It really is. So she's okay. made some subtle tweaks to the curriculum mm -hmm. that have rocketed her heads ahead. And uh, many of you, if you've talked about Switch It, we heard some from the folks about in the feed that, yeah, that was a big activity. That is a manipulation activity where we focus on the right. sounds and words, and kids move sounds uh, in and out of words where we ask them to do the hard work of switching sat to sit and moving up higher and higher levels of phonemic difficulty. That is right. huge for getting the alphabetic principle, getting letter sound knowledge, getting phonemic segmentation, so kids see how the code works. But then mm -hmm. it doesn't actually teach blending how to put the sounds together, which is what you need to be able to attack an unfamiliar word. If you <coughs> see the word sit and you just know it as it, but you don't know what to do with that, you're stuck. And um, <laughs> so Melody wants more details here because Melody, I think, is a first grade <laughs> teacher, but and she's got some English language learners herself, but she wants like, what specifically kind of are your kindergartners working on now? Uh, well, since we've gotten them into the classroom, it's, it's almost like starting over again because mm -hmm. we spent the first quarter online. And I discovered when they came to the classroom that there were quite a few of my kids that were having a lot of help from mom and dad. <laughs> um, so we've, we've kind of had to, to go backwards a little bit, uh, but we are reading um, words and text, uh, decodable text with all of the short vowels. I've learned all five short vowels. And so we're really just working a lot on the blending. Um, and that's where this game came into play because we're just trying to blend every chance we get. Um, we still do our switch it every morning uh, using our magnetic letter tiles. Uh, now they're in person. So that makes it a little bit easier to keep track of who's actually getting it and who's not. Um, but yeah, they're still doing uh, really good. We haven't really advanced past CVC yet. I have a group of kids that I believe really could, but unfortunately I can't pull them as a small group. Um, so we haven't been able to advance past the CVC level just yeah. yet, but I'm, I'm hoping to very soon uh, because they're, they're doing wonderful. I just, I have a few stragglers that haven't quite got it down yet. We're still working on them. And that's why I need to get those small groups going. Right. And they can't, <laughs> I, 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 I yeah, I found out I'm, I, I have an aid now in the afternoon for about an hour. So, yeah, that that's going to really help, I think, get me, you know, once I can get some things for her to do with the other kids, then I'm going to be able to start pulling those groups. And uh, if I've got a whole hour, <laughs> there's no limit to what I'm going to be able to do. So I'm, I'm hoping to be able to pull, you know, two, three groups at least at every day. That I would love be it. awesome. <laughs> this is the reading teacher's dream <laughs> just to get yeah. the kids, you know, especially if you've been virtual. And so I bet some of you are still virtual, right? Uh, give us a sign if you are still virtual. I'm sorry. Hopefully that will end. Yeah. Um, so we were saying that Switch It was really essential to get kids started learning the code, learning how the code works. And but when how, how do we put the things together? So we teach an activity called Read It. And Jennifer's mystery word envelope game, which is what we're going to talk about, is a variation on this. So I just wanted to show you guys real quick how we do read it. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, the teacher would write a word, and she would then ask the students to, to put the first two sounds together. Okay, not go s and then ask as separate, but put those two sounds together. What are these two together? And you want the child to say sa and hold that sound sa t, and that is a very subtle little difference that we call blend as you read sa t instead of going s a t. What word? 
which is what most reading programs teach us to do. And there is research from the 80s and now even in 2020 from the scientific studies of reading that shows that this way, the continuous blending or what we call blend as you read is much more effective. For, and I think it's more effective for those kids that have the phonological processing difficulties. Like uh, some of our kids might not seem to need it because they're just doing it all under, under the, under, cover we don't see it as teachers it's but when when kids can't do blending really easily then this is the 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 mm -hmm. the shortcut for getting that um that's resolved and then after the student reads it then we have them say the word and or the sounds actually as they write it so they the child would go s a t and then the child also would say the sounds as she erased them there we go. S -a -t. So that is our activity. Read it. And we usually do it in small group. You can do it whole group. I just did a whole group. <laughs> um, but I was the only one that read it. So, you know, <laughs> who knows what we what we're doing. Um, but uh, Jennifer was realizing, how do I get 21? How many do you have? 21. 21, yes, 21 wiggly five-year-olds to all pay attention to me at the same time for the same word. <laughs> so she came up with a mystery word. So tell us what, tell us what this is. We'll show videos. And how okay. has it worked for you? Uh, it, it's amazing. The kids love it. Anytime you can turn it into something fun, like switch it. They think it's a game. Mm -hmm. So they love to play switch it. Um, so I was trying to find a way cause we'd been doing the, write the word on the board. Okay. Let's read. And it, it, it's good, but it's also kind of boring. Um, well, we had just recently been reading, um, baby monkey, private eye oh, yeah. <laughs> or private. Yeah. I think it was private eye. Yeah. yeah, the name, yeah. I can't remember the name. Uh, but he's, if you haven't read the story, it's a wonderful little story. Um, but uh, it's a little baby monkey, and it's just mostly pictures that are hilarious. The kids love them. But he's a private detective who's always solving mysteries. And they just loved Baby Monkey. And that's where I got the idea for, oh, well, how about we have a mystery of our own? Uh, and so I just, on a whim, it, this, this little envelope is nothing fancy. I've taken a piece of construction paper, and I fold it in half, and I taped it. <laughs> um, and that's it. I didn't even take the time to laminate them because it's just like, I just want these ready. And so far they've been holding up. Okay. Uh, but then I, I put a number on it because of course, with, um, our COVID-19, we have to keep our social distancing. So the kids can't be touching each other's envelopes. We have to keep the supplies separate. So each child has their own, they all have a number in the classroom. And so every kid's got their own envelope. And I just change out the cards each time. Um, that is after they've been cleaned, sprayed, and disinfected. Um, and then I put a new card in their envelope for the next time we do it. Uh, but yeah, it was presented to the kids as this big mystery. Um, they love it. One thing I have noticed that uh, I might make a suggestion, cut like one corner off, either at the top or the bottom. It makes it a little bit easier for them to pull the card out, um, a notch of some kind. Um, that's a tip that I need to change on my envelopes is to put a little notch in there. Um, but yeah, um, we've done read it before. So they're familiar with the cover card that we use to, you know, uncover the word a piece at a time. Um, so I, we've done this together and I modeled it for them, but they know to start on their number side. This is the start. That way the card's not upside down or backwards. Uh, they pull from this side and they do it just like we do read it. We say read the first down. And then the second sound, and I remind them, put it together. Sorry, wrong way. I, I remind them that they need to put the sounds together. Uh, and then they pull out the last sound and add it um, and see if they can read the word. And when they've got it all done, they're able to pull out their card to check it to see if they got it right. And I just, I played this up as this big mystery and they're detectives. Um, and, you know, they've got to solve the mystery all by themselves. Um, this is kind of that independent practice. Um, and because they have the numbers on it, um, I haven't quite gotten that far in my planning yet, but because they have numbers, I know who this envelope is going to. I can select which cards I put in their envelope. 
Uh, so like that group I've got that I think are, are ready for the maybe CV, CCVC or CVCC words, I can put some different cards in there um, for them. And I know who the child is going to. So it's an easy way to differentiate as well um, by having them labeled with a name or a number or something. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they love the game after they've done reading it and checked it. They slide it back in. And then like Marty did on her whiteboard, uh, they, they cover the word up because I, I want them to hear the sounds. So they cover the word back up in their envelope and they write it on the board and then they get to pull it out and check it to see if they got it right. Um, and when they've got it right, then they get to draw their own picture. I always make them draw a picture one because it takes time and it gives me a chance to go around and check everybody. Um, but also because by them drawing the picture, I know they read the word and didn't just, you know, copy letters. They actually read the word and know what it says. So that's, there are kind of two reasons for the picture, but yeah, mostly it just gives them something to do while I go check others because you know how kindergartners are as soon as they're done, they're jumping up and following you around the room. Miss Click, Miss Click, look at my board, look at my board. And it's, go sit down, go sit down. <laughs> um, so yeah, kind of gives them something to do there. They get to draw their picture on their whiteboard. I love uh, it. And then afterwards they, they just like you said, they erase it and they say the sounds as they go. And I, I remind them of that um, before we start uh, Marnie's got a video to show you. It's, you know, we've done this activity before and you'll hear the kids are telling me what the steps are. They know what to do, but I always kind of remind them just so that they, they don't forget, you know, they're, they are five. <laughs> um, so we yeah. just get that little reminder and model each time and then they go off to do their own and they get so excited when they solve the word and mm -hmm. have figured out the mystery. <laughs> And I love Jennifer's really good with teaching the procedures. I'm sure that's important for all grade levels, but it's probably never yeah. more important than it <clears throat> than for anyone else besides kindergarten, as much as it is for kindergartners, right? Um, so okay. you're going to see that. This is a, uh, in a second, you'll see um, her introducing the activity, and then we'll actually see her when she's walking around and, and watching kids do it. So you can see, you know, um, the real world just in the last few weeks um, of the mystery word envelope happening. And Beth says, it looks so fun, and I like the pictures with the word. Yes. Um, yes. So this is just a sample. You may, these may not fit you. And I love what Jennifer said that she's got some kids who are ready for four sounds, right? Yeah, I can give them that cost and ask and mm -hmm. act and see how they do with it. Yeah, I can and help and desk. My kids right. Yeah. And the next mm -hmm. level would be CCVC. Um, so she's going to be doing that pretty soon. And many of you might be already ready for that. Um, and if you have um, older students, then give them a hard five, six down word like stomp or slink um, and maybe even a nonsense word to teach the blending mm -hmm. skill, the blending the sounds okay. gradually and that will prepare them for multi-syllable words. So this activity, even though we're talking about it for kindergarten, it is the same one I use oh, yeah. for older kids um, when they're struggling. I know Jennifer worked summer school for with sixth graders, fifth and sixth graders mm -hmm. older, around that age. And so you've done this kind of, all yeah. these activities, you've done them with older kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. These were our kids. Uh, the oldest ones in the group were ones who had just finished eighth grade and were entering high school. And I, I did switch it with them. And they're, I think I told Marnie that year that this, I was the coordinator for the summer school program. So I had the, the ability to go to different rooms. And the eighth grade teacher who was in there teaching these students at summer school, he didn't want to do this stuff that I was showing, sharing with all of them because he didn't think he thought it was too, too baby for the kids. I, I went in there and uh, did it one day just to show them how it's done. And the kids had so much fun with it that he, he started doing it afterwards. He couldn't believe that these eighth and ninth graders, uh, yeah, I think there was one little girl, she was sitting next to me while we were doing it. And yes, yeah, she was one of the eighth graders. And we just finished building a word. We're getting ready to do the next one. And she says, hey, this is fun. And I looked up at him and he was just like, who knew? <laughs> I yeah, couldn't when, believe it. When they, when they realize what, that they are getting something that they've been missing for eight right. years, it becomes fun mm -hmm. and very invigorating. Yeah. So uh, Susan asked a good question. Do some kids use the picture to read the word? How uh, do you, well, I'm sure so, it happens to some extent, but. Yeah, some of them do. Um, I'm, the goal is for them to read the word first, and they, they do, they try. But if they are stuck, they can pull it out and look at it. But mostly the picture is there for them to check to see if they read the word correctly. 
And I think most of them do do that. But yeah, there's a couple that probably check the picture to make sure they're right before they say the word out loud. Uh, still working on confidence. <laughs> right. So let, and you know, we're still talking the third month of kindergarten. So uh, without the ability to do small groups or one-on-one -on -one instruction. So let's see the video of Jennifer reintroducing this activity. This is the mystery word envelope to teach the blend as you read decoding strategy for mm -hmm. a group of English language learning kindergarten students in no, uh, November. All right, here we go. Show me that you're ready to use Your legs are crisscrossed, your hands are in your lap. Thank you. Now, I want to ask you, who remembers what this is? Our mystery card! Do we know what's inside? There's a secret inside. Yeah, it's our mystery inside. Ooh. Sitting down. So your job, remember, with our mystery card is you have to discover the mystery that's hiding inside. It's secret. It's secret. Let me put my microphone back on. Forgot I took it off for our music. Let me put our microphone back on our mystery envelope and to solve it Sebastian go sit in your chair please to solve our mystery you have to be detectives do you remember how we be detectives yeah. let me show you i have my mystery envelope i find my number remember where my number is on the top this tells me that this is the top of my envelope, and this is where I start. I take my mystery envelope. Do I just pull the whole thing out all at once? No. Remember how we do this? You guys are going to help me solve my mystery. Here we go. I'm going to pull it out, and when I see the first letter, oh, I'm going to stop. I like it. How about... So now put them together. What does it say? Sit. Nah. What's that word? Nah. Oh, you are genius. And they say, I'm a genius. Now let's see if we get it right. Are you ready? Let's see. Ready? Did we get it right? Yeah. Yeah, look, there's a net that I catch my butterflies in. Very cool. Okay, remember what I do now? Net. I read it. Net. I make sure I got it in my head. Net. I'm going to cover it up. Slide it back inside my mystery envelope so I can't see it. I'm going to get my marker on my whiteboard. Now let me see. What were those sounds I heard? Tell me again. What were they? Mm, tell me the sounds. Mm. What was that last sound? Net. Net. Oh, there it is. And I can even draw my own picture of my net. Here's my butterfly net. Here's my butterfly net. So my little butterflies will fly inside my net. And I'll catch them inside my net. And now I'm going to check and see if I got it right. I got to double check, make sure I got it right. Did I get it right? Does it match? Yeah. So then I say, oh, yeah. Pat myself on the back. And then I'll put my hand up so Miss Blake can come see that I got it. And she can give me a sticker. Are you ready for the mystery Remember, I want you to do this by yourself, or you can ask a friend no. to help you. No. no. Have you got this? No. Yes. Oh, after you show it to me, after you show it to me, remember what we're going to do then? Well, what am I going to say? What do I say as I erase it? and girls, you're going to have about two minutes to get your mystery envelope. So here we go. Bear hands. Eyes on me.
My job is to walk quickly to my seat, get my whiteboard, get my marker, put them on my table. Oh, and my eraser thing. And my eraser. Put them on my nose. And then what do you think you're going to do? That was awesome, as Kellyanne says. <laughs> Love it. They're totally with you. It may be yes. a whole group, and it may be a repeated, you know, you've done it before, but they're like, yeah, we're about to do the mystery. You can see that they would probably execute the steps and not cheat because they're like, mm -hmm. they're ramped up. I love it. Uh, <laughs> April says, I absolutely love the energy. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, you got to keep energy to keep them engaged because they, they, flutter off like butterflies before you know it if you're not careful yeah and esther's like how does the teacher keep all of her energy all week <laughs> coffee. Coffee. <laughs> i have a coffee pot in my classroom <laughs> oh okay so that was the introduction although it's not the first introduction but she you see it's brilliant teaching you've got to go over the steps um yeah and this is nice because this reading the read it activity um, and the blend as you read strategy. Jennifer knows this is something she's got to do for a long time. And so yeah. this game and the routine of it is really important. Bringing this, you know, into that is, is really great to, uh, keep them engaged, but then to, um, uh, still do some the same thing over and over again and I really love how she pointed out, she's not just going to keep everybody at three sound words. So she, this is, yeah. yes, we're going to teach blending, but we're also going to be pushing them to higher and higher phonemic levels. So, mm -hmm. so let's see some little examples, okay? So let's, I'll pull up one example. It looks like the first one I'm seeing here is going to be the word pig and maybe a little bit of the word bug. So this is up close and personal with, personal <laughs> with kindergarten kids doing the mystery envelope with Miss Glick. Okay, detect your camera rolling. What does it say? <laughs> Bad, yes, way to go. Give me a high five. I love it. Ellie, you're going to share yours with me? Read it for me. What does it say? Eh, eh, eh. Eh. Pig. Pig. Pull it all the way out. Let's see. Is you right? It is right. And I love it. You're writing it on your board. Say the sounds. Miss Glick, Miss Glick, can I pull it out to see what I draw? Yes, you can. Oh, but that G is backwards. Go ahead and look at your card now and have a look at that G. We got to turn that G around. Good stuff there. So they were getting some individualized instruction and you were getting kind of close to them. So you could use a pointer if you have to, right? How many of you have a real a good long pointer? It's but, so hard not to do those high fives. <laughs> but just for 30 seconds, uh, even 15 seconds, yeah. uh, with masks, it's highly unlikely to be a spreading event. But yeah. um, Laura... Did you notice little Ellie there, after she read the word, she slid it back under... She made sure it was underneath because she didn't want to peek when she was writing it. Um, I didn't tell her to do that. She she did that right. all on her own. She, she wanted to hide it. Um, yeah. So they, they do have the routine in their head pretty well, yeah. And what's happening with that child is not that she's memorized the spelling. She might not recognize mm -hmm. that word at in an instant the next time she sees it. But we're, when Jennifer's having her write it, she's having to access the sounds. Okay, what are the sounds I hear in pig? Puh. Oh, I know how to write puh. And then what's the mm -hmm. next sound? Eh. So she's doing that encoding or spelling process through... This, the sound-based processes that Jennifer's taught her, and it's really important. It's going to build a high-frequency word automaticity or sight word knowledge. Um, All right, so let's see another one. This is the word bug. No, let's the word do, do the word mad. All right. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. 
What's that first sound? So that's good. You're helping him really up, you know, at the, the fundamental level. Yeah, he's one that needs a lot of support. He's one of my, my uh, real low English language learners. So he has trouble just with the language itself. But he's still working a lot on sounds. I knew he knew that mm, ah, but um, the duh, I didn't know if he remembered that one. So that's why I kind of, when I saw he was getting stuck, I just gave it to him because I wanted mm. to keep his flow going. Yeah. Um, and he's one that, you know, I will release more of it to him. I try to get him to do as much as he can, but he's still one of those that I want to try and support. So I, I make sure that I go by him, but he's always so proud of himself when he gets it. Um, he just big grin, big smiles. He's, well, all of really these, proud. yeah, he's one of uh, 21 kids who didn't know much of yeah. any letter sounds at the beginning of the year. Jennifer had Dibble's data. They right. didn't know letter sounds. They didn't have phonemic segmentation. Mm -hmm. All of this is just kindergarten classroom or virtual <laughs> instruction. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so let's uh, let's watch um, a child read the word yell. We haven't done yell yet, have we? No. Huh? He's okay. Yep, he's got it. Show me. What does it say? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, he's got to do it himself. Go sit down. Go sit down. He wants to do it all by himself. Yell. Uh, yeah. And look at that. The picture shows it too. How was that going? Oh, that that was great. Yeah, that was little Sebastian. If you notice, he started to read it and then he pushed it back in. It's because one of his friends had come over his shoulder and wanted to read it for him. And you could see he was very like, no, no, I want to do it myself. Uh, he was very possessive of it because he wanted to make sure he did it himself. Mm -hmm. And it, they're, they're all like that. They all want to run around and help each other because they're just so excited that they can yeah. read it. Um, so yeah, sometimes that's hard. Again, it's that social distance. You have to stay in your seat, but they, <laughs> they're five. <laughs> uh, I think we're, I have one more video example, you guys. Okay, go ahead. Bud. Bud, yes. <laughs> Such enthusiasm. Yeah, that yeah, that's when he read it to me. Yeah, it came up later after he wrote it. He had to bring it up and show it to me when I was reading oh. Pig with uh, Ellie over there. Okay. Uh, yeah, he, he's really proud of himself. He's one that came in with no sounds, none mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And he's it's, it's starting to really click. I think he's going to be one that just takes off because mm -hmm. the sounds and everything, it's all starting to click for him. And well, like all of them, he just gets so happy. They, yeah. Uh, I love that excitement when they do it and they get so happy and excited and proud of themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you were doing this in a small group, uh, would you still probably give everybody a different word, a different envelope? Yeah, probably because we've got this routine down now. Um, before, I, I wouldn't have, like last year I didn't because it wasn't something that we did as a whole group, so they weren't used to doing it independently. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know in, in the past in my small groups, I would have one word that they would all read together. Uh, but yeah, this has been working so great, and they have the routine that... Uh, I'm thinking this may be a good way to like start our small group session as they all, as they're coming to join. Okay, here's your envelope Ooh. when you're ready to read it for me. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we could jump into our switch it, our rereading, our, you know, everything else after that. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe some more, you know, just regular read it with just a single card for all of them. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think this would be a great way to start, start the lesson off uh, mm -hmm. just to get them excited about coming. Oh, I get to do my envelope today. You mm -hmm. know? <laughs> So I'm really glad to be able to share Jennifer's ideas with you guys. It's just a variation on Read It, which is a fundamental activity that we teach here at Reading Simplified. The ultimate guide to blending is very helpful if you're encountering issues with this. And again, I wanted to point out, this is not just for kindergartners. This is for anyone who's not yet fluent so that they can learn to blend sounds really smoothly and quickly and even prepare them for multi-syllable word reading. Because what are we doing when we read um, irascible. Uh, we have to read each chunk really quickly. Irass, and then we put them together. We call it the blend as you read by chunk. Irass, irass, irascible. So this is, as Candace says, just one of a handful of activities here that we teach at Reading Simplified. 
switch it and read it. These two together go super well together because they mm -hmm. both address decoding and spelling from different angles and fill in a lot of the pieces about how our code works and how to teach our kids how sounds and symbols line up. It's really not as complicated as all the different activities would have us think. I mean, you, you didn't have to do a lot of letter sound stuff in isolation and uh, you went pretty quickly to real words, right? Yes, yes, as, as quickly as I could. Like say we were reading uh, that third day of school, we were reading cat and fat and mat. I forget what all the words were, bat. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we were putting them all together and just have been going going crazy ever since. Mm -hmm. Would you like future complimentary trainings like this here at Reading Simplified? Then make sure you ring the bell here at YouTube to become a subscriber so that you learn more of our ways of streamlining instruction and accelerating students' reading achievement. And you can also find us on Facebook at Reading Simplified, usually on Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We go live with other complimentary trainings and we give away some freebies for teachers and parents. So I hope to see you here again next time on YouTube or even on Facebook. Take care.